Hello, everybody. So, uh, I thought we'd have a look at extending the gameplay debugger. You'll see here in um, one of my own projects, I've extended this category into the gameplay debugger. Kind of slows down when I'm not focused on the object. Uh, and print some custom information. So, have a look how we do that. So there's a couple of things to look note before we do that kind of thing. And that is that if you go to the source code directory, you're on this screen, you need to make another project. So my original project was Emotion Director. And then I've created another um, directory with public and private and the build files in the source directory called Emotion Director Editor. So I would suggest you follow that kind of convention. The idea of this is that we're going to extend the editor um, for doing some debugging stuff. So what do you need to actually implement? Well, um, there's a couple of things I've done extra, but for this particular tutorial, we're going to look at this Emotion Tracker thing. So Emotion Tracker is if you want to extend the gameplay debugger, you create a class derived from this F gameplay debugger category, and that's defined in this header file here. And what it's trying to do is define a couple of functions, well, three main functions and a data structure to use. So I'll go through the, the different usages of it. So let's just have a quick look at these functions in the EPP file. Um, so let's take it in turn, right? So what are the functions that we need to, to override? Well, one is collect data, and that packs the data up. One is draw data, that actually does the drawing onto the screen. And then the other one is this static one that creates the instance. So it's kind of like um, a function call to create, a, it's a factory method essentially to create this, this new emotion tracker, um, object type. So what's going to happen is that the collect data function, if we just have a quick uh, go to that. Um, so the class constructor is just going to call a couple of functions, as I'll talk about those in a second. And there's some code for the, the actual creation of the instance. So let's look at the make instance call first. And all you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to return uh, the base class type as a T-shared ref. And T-shared ref is a um, reference counted smart pointer kind of thing. Uh, this function is a static function that's called as a sort of factory method to create the object type that you're using. So all we're going to do there is do make shareable and then the new and our type of object, which is this class type. So that one should be fairly obvious what's what's happening. So when the system starts up, it calls this make instance call as a static call. This returns the shared ref, which is that smart pointer, pointing to a new instance of this object. So it's just a standard factory method. So the important ones um, are for the actual tracker itself is this collect data. So collect data is a virtual override that is essentially going to pack up this data structure. So if we go back to the data structure itself, by convention, it's called this frep data. And all we're doing is declaring a struct in here with some properties in it. Now, the important thing to realize is that this struct has to have this serialized function in it that takes an f archive and allows you to store and basically read and write to that struct. Um, so uh, we'll talk you through the, the sort of structure usage, but essentially it's saying declare this struct, make sure it's got the serialized function, and then create an instance of it in your class. And then inside the actual code, What's doing here is doing set data pack replication, which essentially says this is the address of the struct that uses that's being used to replicate. That's that actually goes in an array of these things. So you can create multiple data packs if you need. Um, the show only with debug actor is a flag to say whether you should only show the the um, 
the actual information that you're displaying when there's an actor selected or not. So um, we're not bothered about that, so we switch it to false. So the collect data essentially is um, feeding stuff into that data pack. So the data pack, remember, is this, um, this data type here with a variable there. So we're going to feed it, um, I'm calling non right now, but you'd probably feed it the component name. You could do whatever data you actually want in here. So I'm going to take some, I'm going to find the debug actor. The debug actor is the one that's selected. I'm going to get a component from it. This TI inline components array actually gets an array of components of a specific type. I know there's only going to be one, so I'm literally just looking for if it's greater than zero. It gets the component name from that, so using the get full name, and then it basically looks through some data structure that I've got in my object and throws some strings into the data pack. So essentially all this is doing is feeding some strings into this data pack. There is actually a couple of functions overridden in the base class for, um, for this class here, fdebugger category, so you can actually do some of these things slightly simpler. But so collect data is your entry point for stuffing the data into that data structure. And the point is that that data structure itself is actually replicated across the network. So this whole system essentially works as a sort of client server thing. You know, it collects data from the server and draws it on the client. So the collect phase is actually running on the server part, feeding it into this replicated variable, this replicated structure. And then the draw data is taking that same structure and actually drawing some information from it. So in the draw data function, what we're doing is we're unpacking the data pack that we've packed up with information that's been replicated across the network, and we're just going to draw it. So the, the interesting thing here is that there's this F gameplay debugger canvas context, and that's essentially a wrapper around a bunch of canvas calls, canvas being the 2D display system that's used for drawing like lines and simple stuff for the UI to draw. So for Canvas, you can draw anything in 2D. So the, I, the idea here is that the, um, the stuff that you're generally going to be drawing is like text and lines and rectangles and those kind of things. I've actually got an example that I'll show you in a second of a graph that I've used for one of my other gameplay debugger um, sessions and stuff. So you can draw stuff, arbitrary things on screen, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's really it. There's not an awful lot to it. You create your class, you um, do a constructor, a make instance function for the factory method. You feed some data in and out of this data structure with collect, and then you draw it with draw. And that's really all there is to the actual code for this. Um, so just to show you what I mean, the, the serialized function here is a um, simple serialized method that takes the f-archive and allows you to serialize into and out of these different um, fields that are just f-strings right now. You can create any type of fields you want that'll, that are serializable. It uses the serialize operator so it can go in and out as well, so it's like bidirectional that kind of thing. Um, so this data structure that we're using could be anything. It could be a single F string. It could be a whole bunch of F strings. It could be literally any data structure you like, as long as you've got it so that it can serialize across the, the network. Um, and the category itself, um, so I th can't remember whether I actually had to give it a number for which category I was going to use. I'm not sure. So let's look at the actual build setup for us because there's a couple of things that we need to do to make sure this works. Um, one is that we need these private dependencies added so that Slate and the, some of the property level editor kind of stuff is available. Um, so you might want to add some of those. Let's just show you the rest of that. Um, obviously your names will be different for your projects and things, but ultimately property editor level editor details customization and those kind of things are still um, they're still the same. So uh, we make the public private dependency on gameplay debugger for this editor build, and we add the directories that we're using for the public and private um, include pass 
just for simplicity, really. And it also adds this definition with gameplay debugger. So basically we're saying if this module, if there is running in a debugger and it's with the gameplay debugger, then we build this module in with it. So what else is there? Um, okay, so there's a couple of other extra things. One is that we need to make sure that our target file, so that's, that would be our normal game one, and we add another target file for our editor part, you know, our editor sort of overrides. And all we're doing here is um, making sure that we add this emotion director editor thing. So your project would be named something different, you know, whatever your project name is, or editor. So that's pretty simple as well. So what else have we got? Um, well, that's really it. So the question is, why would you want to do this? Um, I found that it's useful to be able to draw th arbitrary things on, on a 2D sort of overlay on screen, especially for debugging purposes. And obviously that's the typical use case they're expecting here. So they're not, it's not an in-game thing, it's more a, a, a meta debugging tool. So you're extending the actual editor tool set to allow you to do things like debug. And um, so what you're seeing on screen in a second is you're seeing some of the debugging graph drawing that I'm doing for the perception stuff in Ground Branch. And you'll see that that's kind of useful to be able to debug values that are changing constantly. So imagine you're doing, I don't know, like an engine tuning system and you want to be able to see what those values are doing in real time. like. You could draw them on screen with like a print string or something like that. But wouldn't it be really nice if you could actually like draw a graph of them in 2D? Draw a graph of like say the acceleration values or draw a graph of the, I don't know, the friction coefficients or things like that. So the point is that this canvas, if we look inside the canvas context, so let's go to that base class. This U canvas thing is the thing that allows you to draw essentially any 2D stuff on the screen in, in Unreal Engine. So it means that you can do um, lines and rectangles and all sorts of fun shapes. Um, so you can add like shapes in 3D, shapes in 2D, that kind of thing. Um, so if you're going to do any kind of um, data tweaking thing, I think this gameplay debugger might be a useful tool for you to have a look at. There is a bunch of documentation on the Unreal Engine site, but it's kind of a little bit, I'm not sure it's entirely up to date right now. So this version should um, at least give you an idea. What I did was when I was first writing the code, I just found one of these classes, uh, with one of the classes derived from that and basically copied what it did. Um, and it was pretty simple to be honest. So maybe have a look at doing that, extending the gameplay debugger. It's actually, um, I think, very useful just in terms of being able to extend the editor is a useful thing in general. Um, you might end up being a tools program, right? So you might as well be able to extend the tool sets they're using. So looking at ways for extending it like that. Uh, we'll look at some editor customization and some other stuff another time, but I think that this one's probably useful for a couple of you at least. So uh, hopefully you'll give it a try. Um, if you need any help, obviously you can ask me, or I might just clear a project and do a simple version with nothing like really complex in it and maybe put that online, I don't know. So thanks for watching. Hopefully that's helped you a little bit. Um, if you need any more information about the sort of workings of it all, feel free to uh, leave me a comment.